Well, I'm joined now from London by the Labour MP and former Shadow Scottish Secretary, Ian Murray. Well, Ian Murray, it, it's pretty clear from what Liam Fox has just been saying to Andrew Marr, the government is promoting this idea that perhaps the backstop could be taken out of the withdrawal agreement and made a bilateral deal between London and Dublin, which would possibly get round the problems with the DUP and possibly with some at least Conservative MPs. Do, can you see that as being a viable way out? Well, it looks as though that might just be another botch in this whole process. I think the best thing that would be happening in Parliament at the moment would be if the Prime Minister genuinely reached out across the chamber to all parties to try and find a way through uh, this mess and tinkering around the edges with a deal that went down and the biggest defeat a government's ever had in parliamentary history is not really going to sort this. Now, taking out the backstop might mean that the Prime Minister brings her deal back. That was always going to be one of the views and she may bring it back on the 27th of March. So there'll be no point in having a deal because we'll be in Hobson's choice of her deal, her amended deal, or indeed no deal. So all these things will be on the table and will be rehearsed between now and Monday and when the votes come a week on Tuesday. But at this moment in time, I think the Prime Minister really does have to look at some fundamental changes and fundamentally try and find a majority in Parliament rather than tinkering around the edges. Um, there is, a, it would seem, an amendment to be put down tomorrow, um, which is sponsored by different parties. Nikki Morgan is a member of the Conservative Party, Yvette Cooper from Labour, Norman Lamb from the Liberal Democrats, which basically seems to say what you've just said. It, 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 that it would give Theresa May a period of time to come up with what you've suggested, and then Parliament would take over. Have you been involved in these discussions? Is it something you would vote for? Well, we've all been involved in lots and lots of discussions over the last few days, and one of the things that's been quite unique in terms of this whole process is why the government has been very stoic and not doing and not want to do anything. Backbenchers have been coming together across party, across the aisles, and trying to find solutions to this that are sensible to the country and to the economy. And this particular proposal does have a lot of merits. It doesn't tell us where we want to go, of course. All it does is say that we would have to suspend or extend Article 50, and I think we're now in the place whereby the UK will not leave on the 29th of March uh, 2019 because we have to find an extension. We're running out of time. I think there's 35 parliamentary sitting days until we're due to leave the European Union. There is no majority for any type of deal at the moment that would get through Parliament and therefore an extension to Article 50 would be the first stop and that's what this bill uh, seeks to do and certainly something I think will get cross-party support. But the big issue still is unresolved. What do okay, we do? But, and I but, think we should put that, use that time to extend Article 50 to go back to the people and the people's vote in my opinion. Right, but, but just on this amendment tomorrow, this idea of Parliament taking control, how, how does that work? I mean, if Theresa May can't come back with something that's acceptable and Article 50 is suspended, which would have to be done in negotiation with the European Union, who does that negotiation with the European Union? Who, who runs Parliament? Well, the government would be instructed to do these things. The government, of course, it still runs Parliament, and part of the amendment is to try and get some of that power away from the executive and back into the hands of Parliament. So the amendment quite clearly says, and I think Dominic Greaves got a very similar amendment that he's bringing forward and been working on, that if the Prime Minister can't get a majority for any type of proposition by the 26th of February, then automatically uh, discussions would have to happen with the EU to extend or revoke Article 50, at least in a temporary period, and the government would be instructed to do that. This would be the sovereign parliament taking back control of this process and then beyond that we'd have to find a mechanism for trying to find a way through this uh, particular problem in terms of trying to get a majority for some kind of deal or, or indeed in my view I think we should go back to the people with the deal that's currently on the table because it's a measurable proposition and have a people's vote to get the public back into this process and see if we can stop the sorry mess of parliament being unable to decide. When you say the deal that's currently on the table are you suggesting a referendum should be either stay in the EU or have Theresa May's deal. Well, there'll be lots of discussions about this, and I think a lot of people open-minded on, on which way this should go, but I'm very clear that if we're going to put anything back to the people, we have to have measurable propositions. We've seen from 2016 the bus with the lie of the £350 million a week extra for the NHS, the leaflets that Boris Johnson was handing out saying we're going to be invaded by 74 million Turks. All of those promises and all of those things from the 2016 referendum were indeed lies and have been proven to be lies now, and therefore I think we have to have measurable propositions Propositions, okay. and that would be something we can measure in terms of a deal, whether it be the Prime Minister's deal or something else, and what we currently enjoy as a member of the European Union. Right. Uh, what is the parliamentary process by which, I mean, as you have pointed out a moment ago, that the, neither the Dominic Grieve, who's in favour of another referendum, neither his amendment tomorrow, nor the Yvette Cooper, Nicky Morgan ones, actually call for another referendum, or indeed, as you put it, a solution 
to, to this. How, in terms of parliamentary process, do you get to what you want, which is another referendum? Uh, well, these are just two amendments that are being discussed at the moment. And don't forget that the uh, Prime Minister will come back with a statement tomorrow and then the, she will place a motion for debate and vote the following Tuesday, the 29th of January. And it's that debate and vote the following Tuesday that amendments will go down. Uh, Dominic Grieve and uh, Yvette Cooper's amendment, if we can call them that, will come then and Parliament will have to take a decision on them. But there will actually also be other amendments down too, including uh, potentially a People's Vote amendment um, to try and seek a majority in the House. We may have a whole host of indicative votes to try and see if there's a last amendment standing, if you like. But the important thing here is now, I think the first priority of Parliament has to be to try and prevent a no deal. And in order for us to prevent a no deal, we have to find a parliamentary mechanism okay. in law to do that. Run, and that's what these two run, amendments run, are trying to achieve. Running out of time, I, I think in a speech the other day, you pointed out, and I think, I think you called it ludicrous, Labour's current position, which appears to be its first choice as a general election where it would campaign for the Keir Starmer version of Brexit, and its second choice is, is a... Uh, sorry, its first choice is a general election, second choice a referendum in which it would campaign to stay in the European Union. These are flatly contradictory propositions. Labour has to sort this out pretty soon. I mean, Keir Starmer's just got himself uh, a few minutes ago in great problems answering precisely this point. Well, and given that Keir Starmer, in your words, has got himself into great problems trying to answer this point, shows you the problem, doesn't it, in terms of the Labour Party position. There was a very clear motion uh, put to Labour Party conference. We're now on the third leg of that particular stool because we voted against the PM's uh, agreement. We've uh, had a vote of no confidence, which hasn't produced a general election. And now we're on the third part of that. And Keir Starmer at the Fabians conference yesterday in London said quite clearly we have to now move to the position of looking at a people's vote with the option uh, to remain because that might be the only way out of the this particular mess. I think Hilary Benn has highlighted that today on one of the yeah, uh, yes, Sunday but, but shows. Yes, but if Jeremy so Corbyn keeps saying he wants another general election and he'll campaign for Brexit, and if he can't get that, he wants a, a, another referendum, the campaign for Remain. I mean, Labour is not going to be taken seriously, is it, by the, pop, the people of Britain with that flatly <laughs> contradictory position? Well, Gordon, you're preaching to the converted because I absolutely agree and I think the Labour Party should as soon as possible move to backing a people's vote. And let me tell you why. Because there's lots of discussions going on at the moment in terms of the votes next Tuesday about bringing a people's vote amendment, but we only want to bring a strong amendment if we know that the Parliament can win it. We're only having those discussions because the Labour front bench don't support it. So if they come out strongly in support of a people's vote in the next seven days, an amendment will go down, Parliament will get a majority behind it because we know we've got a, a okay. Conservative benches Listen, and we'll get that we're, through we're Parliament. Out of time. So your call to Jeremy Corbyn would be back an amendment calling for another referendum? Yes, back it, whip it and let's get it through Parliament and majority and get this back to the people. Ian Murray, thank you very much indeed for joining us.